How's it going, folks? Shane here from Long Range Precision of PA. I wanted to do the uh, 500 round review on the SWFA SS 16 by 42 millimeter optic. Uh, well, I have a little over 600 rounds now through the rifle with this optic on it, and I haven't had any issues. Um, now, the model I went with, like I said, was the, the fixed 16 power, 42 millimeter object, objective lens. Um, I went with the Milleradian model um, on this turret. It's 0.1 mils per click, and uh, one full revolution on this turret is 5 mils. Um, this optic has rear focus on it. Rear focus and uh, rear adjustment for your parallax. Uh, on the tactical models, they have a knob on the left side of the tube for your parallax adjustment. Um, the next model I get, I'm probably going to go with the tactical model on that. Um, this optic has the mil quad reticle on it, which is very nice. Um, even though it's just uh, fixed 16 power, we were shooting targets uh, 10, 10 inch by 11 targets, anywhere from like 5, 550 yards up to 1100, and then uh, we're shooting 24 inch gongs at 1208 with it. Um, it's not too bad. Um, it's not going to be as big of a sight picture as say you know a Vortex Viper HST with a you know 5 to 25 uh, magnification adjustment on it you know I mean you're, you're limited to 16 but it makes it nice because um, since you're on the fixed power optic a lot of the, your reliability and ruggedness is going to be focused on your turrets and uh, tracking with the scope is just phenomenal I did I thought I had an issue a little while back with the tracking. Um, I ended up just being uh, some of the hand loads I was using were uh, I was having inconsistencies in it. And I was throwing them off. I ended up doing a tall target test on this. Uh, I can't remember how many mils I adjusted up, but uh, it was it was right on. Um, I have no issues with that at all. Um, like I said, this comes this optic has a 30 millimeter main tube on it. And uh, on this particular rifle here, which is my 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm running the Weaver Tactical uh, rings. Haven't had any issues with anything coming loose. Um, next build, I'm going to actually run. Probably end up getting the the 12 by 42 SWFA and running with SWFA's rings as well as their bubble level and everything. I just want to run everything SWFA and see how it holds up. Um, like I said, this is on the mil quad reticle on it. Uh, very nice reticle, very fine, clear lines. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen it. Um, the mil quad reticle runs the hash marks on it, as well as the diamonds. So it's it's very nice for uh, making adjustments if you don't want to, you know, adjust your turret for your firing solution every time. If you just want to use, you know, go off your ballistic calculator and everything, figure out what your ballistics are for uh, whatever cartridge you're shooting. And then just, you know, use your hash marks and your diamonds for elevation and or windage adjustments. But um, I like using the turrets. It's just, I don't know, I guess the coolness factor. But, um, yeah, I ended up getting this off the SWFA's website for two sixty nine, And then uh, it already came with the Butler Creek flip-up up, flip up, uh, scope caps. So it was really nice. Um, I also ended up picking up a set of the Zero Stop shims. I, I will, uh, I can't think of it offhand. I'm going to get the info. Put it in the description, but um, they're Delrin shims that actually go underneath your turret cap. So once you get your you know 100 yard zero, whatever yardage you're going to zero at, get your zero, then you can pull your cap off and uh, figure out what shims you want to run. That way, you know, say you want to adjust up, you know, five mils or whatever, 5.2 mils for shot, come back down. It's a solid stop. Doesn't leave you wondering where your zero was if you pass it up. Uh, if you might have lost track where you're at, you know you just come back, back right back down your zero. Makes it nice, especially if you're engaging targets at different yardages. So um, we'll be shooting our first PRS matches this spring here, starting April. Um, Going to be shooting the club series. I'm actually thinking about leaving this fix 16 on my 65. So I'm going to be running the this bolt gun as well as an 18 inch upper at AR-15 and the gas gun classes. I'm actually thinking about giving either the fixed 10 power or 12 power on that as well. Uh, I was getting a lot of criticism on running a fixed optic for PRS, but 
I was doing some research online, and there are actually a lot of guys running it, and they have no issues. And uh, being the first year in PRS, I'm just going to give it a try. I mean, it's going to cut costs down a good bit. I, I know the scope's proven and reliable, so I'm going to give it a go and see how it is. Um, I'll give you a real quick here on these turrets. We give you up close footage and uh, explain more on the zero stop shims. Alrighty, now these uh these zero stop shims that I ordered from that company. There's about I think five or six shims in a bag, come in a little Ziploc bag like this, and uh, it's different thicknesses. I'm imagining this is millimeters, but uh, I got half here. This one's a little bit thicker. It's marked with a one. And what you do in there is on these SWFAs to hold the top turret cap on, you got three set screws on the top of this little rim here, okay? Loosen them set screws, that cap pulls off now. You want to make sure you get your zero first, whether it be 100 yards, 200, whatever you're doing. I like to zero at 100 yards. You get your zero, and then you'll uh, you pull your turret cap off, and then you'll play around with these shims until you get it to where you'll bring this back to your zero, and it'll be a zero stop, a solid stop, and it's a pronounced solid stop. You don't have to worry about it. Um, now mine's off here. I'm actually I was working on a couple different hand loads that I wanted to run for the PRS series, so I did zero the rifle, but I didn't mess with any more shims, so I figure, you know, for now, since I'm just doing some load development, you know, I'll bring it back down. That's my zero stop, then I'll just have to come back up to my zero for now. But um yes, yeah, it's, it's very nice to have. Um you know, like like I shown here, if you're working on a couple different loads, you're gonna have to, you know, reshim this turret for those particular cartridges. But um, it makes it nice if you have to engage targets at you know various distances and then come back to your zero to move on to the next stage or whatever. It's very nice for that. Very convenient. But yeah, like you notice here, these uh, the clicks on this elevation turret are really, really easy to hear. Really pronounced, solid clicks. There's not hardly any play in the turrets. It's nice. The tracking on this. I forget how many mils of elevation I have here. I'm, I'm actually running a uh, factory base on this Ruger Predator. I'm not running a 20 mil away base yet, so. I love it. For the money, the reliability and the quality of this optic is phenomenal.